to be for a closer look at what's playing itself out on the market scene is Andrew Padua from Assassin. Well, thank you so much for your time, Andrew. Uh, quite positive sentiment, actually, and quite a different picture than we saw yesterday because it was quite mixed yesterday. And from the Asian markets, it looked like that was going to be the trading uh, session today. But actually, we're just seeing a sea of green. Is there just optimism ahead of these interest rate decisions coming up this week? Well, firstly, thanks so much for having me on the show, Zanati. Um, with regards to your question, there wasn't anything specific that I could pick up. You know, just a good day in general. Like you mm. said, U.S. markets are up as well. Um, our banks and retailers did nicely. Even the miners made some money for a change. Uh, <laughs> the strong rand as well. So, you know, all in all, a pretty good day. But I think it's all going to come down to what happens on Wednesday and Thursday with uh, Fed, well, central banks and what yeah. they have to say. What are your expectations there? So... Interest rates are going to come down. It's just a matter of how much, mm. both in the U.S. on Wednesday and in South Africa on Thursday. I think the Fed meeting is important, but I think the jobs and economic data that will follow is also critical to how markets will move over the next couple of weeks. I think a Goldilocks scenario for me would be 50 basis points <laughs> uh, for South Africa and the U.S., but in the U.S., the Fed have to kind of kind of navigates dropping by 50 basis points without making everyone panic that, you know, the econo economy is slowing down. So, but let's see what happens. I've yeah. got a feeling that it'll only be 25 basis points for both, though. Ah, all right. Well, let's check in on the company news that came out of the JSC today. Archer is coming out with its annual results. They normalized earning, uh, earnings per share, climbing uh, more than a 20% full year dividend, up 29%. Also declaring a special dividend. We did obviously see investors cheering that with that stock up about 10% at some point. Uh, what are you making of these numbers? I thought they were exceptional. Um, earnings up 20%, annualized new business increasing to 30%. You know, there was another company in the JSC last week that had their results out showing sales growth of 5%, but mm -hmm. cost inflation of 6 So your sales volume was actually going down. That's not the case for our insurance. You know, at the, end, at the end of the day, businesses need to sell more stuff. Mr. Price need to sell more T-shirts. ShopRite need to sell more bread. Yeah. ABI need to sell more tea bags. You can't raise prices forever. You need you need sales volume as well. Yeah. So with new business growth of 30% from our insurance, I think that's that's really exceptional. Yeah, absolutely impressive. Let's go into uh, the property market. Uh, High Prop also releasing annual results there. Uh, it's distributable income uh, per share, uh, exceeding expectations, even though it was down from the prior period. Uh, talking about a strong operational uh, performance there. Also, investors cheering there, uh, share climbing uh, 4%. Uh, what did you uh, think of what uh, High Prop put out today? Sure. So Harprop had a trading statement last week, so we had an idea of what the income per share was going to be. Um, and last week they also had a bit of a rally with the share price. So I'm not too sure why there was a rally today because mm. we already knew about, you know, the 8.6 percent decrease. But I'm sure Harprop, you know, they're looking forward to lower rates, not only because they're a property company that uses gearing to enhance returns, but they're also retail focused and consumers hopefully will be in better shape with with imminent interest rate cuts. Talking about better shape, it seems that that is the future for Metair, uh, saying that it is disposing of its Turkish operations. You know, obviously, they've had quite a lot of uh, challenges there. Uh, we did see also that share price surging over 11%. Is this really ushering in a future of less risk for Metair? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. I think the shares you know, were up a lot. The yeah. shareholders are obviously thrilled that they're out of Turkey. Um, but there's, there's been a common pattern with South African companies where they go offshore to try and grow because in South Africa the growth has been historically low or no growth. Um, but then they come back looking like Mark Tyson punched them in the face. You know, look at, yeah. you look at WBHO and Woolworths going to Australia. You mm. look at Tiger Brands in Africa, famous brands in the UK, Mediclinic in the UAE, mm -hmm. and now Meta in Turkey, mm. unfortunately added to that list. Yeah, yeah, it's quite interesting. Let's get to your stock pick for today, Andrew. Sure. So my stock pick for today is Constellation Software. So they are effectively like the Berkshire Hathaway of software, run by the founder, Mark Leonard. Uh, if you Google him, he looks like Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, but he's a really, really smart man, phenomenal <laughs> capital allocator. Um, so I think, yeah, Constellation Software, an amazing business. What really matters over the long run is the quality of management. Uh, quality of the business and the quality of their capital allocation decisions. And I think Constellation Software, in my opinion, gets full marks for all, for all three.
Ah, well, thank you so much for your time and giving us insights on what has been moving investors' money today, Andrew. That was Andrew Padoa from Assassin Wealth.